I've just parked up at Troutbeck Church and the intention is to walk up the Garbone Pass, have a look, see what the weather's like, what the weather's going to do this afternoon and if it's decent I'll do a longer walk, if not a shorter walk, hopefully get a few nice photographs and uh, a bit of inspiration. Might get a fell done or not, don't know, but um, it's a nice autumn afternoon. We'll see how we get on. The location of this walk is in the Troutbeck Valley, a few miles north of Windermere and not far from the village of Troutbeck. Parking can be had in a small lay-by near Troutbeck Church. From there, we'll head up towards the Howe, on the other side of the road, onto the Garburn Pass. We'll continue north along a good footpath to the summit of Yoke. For this walk, we will be turning around at the Yoke Summit and retracing our steps back down towards Troutbeck. The first thing we have to do is head south on the footpath adjacent to the road. Cross Church Bridge and in short distance we head over the road to pick up that narrow lane that will take us up to the Garburn Road. So as we've gained a bit of height, what I was hoping was going to happen has happened. The cloud has actually lifted off the Ilbell Ridge and I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera but I've taken a, a photo to show you. Is that there's some lovely light going across the fell side over Troutback Tongue and over to Yoke. So it looks as if I might get a good couple of hours in. I'm not bothered about going up and bagging hills just for the sake of it. It's just lovely to come out into the Lakedon Fells have a wander and see what's going on. You can perhaps hear a helicopter. It looks as if it could be the one that they use for fix the fells for lifting stone up onto tracks that need repairing. So we might see a bit of work going on as we get further up the pass. It's a lovely bit of a path this. Meant as an old pass road between the Troutbeck Valley and the Kentmere Valley. It's still pretty good order. When I came up a few years ago, there had been a lot of wash out from um, heavy rain and floods. But no, lovely little route. You'll soon come to this point where the, the track actually forks. You can take the left hand track and that leads you through Troutbeck Park, the lower walk through the valley, which is a lovely walk in its own right. If you take the right hand fork, it takes you up over onto the Garbone Pass itself and the paths that lead up towards Yoke, Nil Bell and Sour House and Sallows on this side. I've made a decision that going by the weather, we're going to take the right hand fork and then perhaps come back along this lane later on to get back to the car. But it's got a bit warm, so I'm afraid the jacket has to come off. Amazingly warm for mid October, but at least I've got it in case I need it later. I can't remember how long ago it was that I came up here. I'm going to have to look in my archives. But when I did, this track was a real washout. It was really awkward to walk on, stones everywhere. It was really quite wide. You certainly couldn't uh, walk up it comfortably. 
and <laughs> certainly wasn't suitable for vehicular access. But what a remarkable difference. They've built up the, the, uh, the track so it's now got drains either side. Still on the footings of the old Garburn Pass Road. You could nearly uh, come up here on a wheelchair if you were strong enough, but um, yeah, what an amazing difference. Lovely to walk on, and then with the view over here of uh, Troutbeck, always in view to your left as you ascend the path. Wonderful. As you ascend the path, you'll come to a right hand, then a left hand bend. On that bend, you'll see this stile. And through the field at the top there is another stile. If you wanted to do Sour Harris on the route that I'm doing now, you could take this route over these two stiles and that would take you up to Sour Harris. That's also a nice little short walk, but uh, we'll save that for another day. Well, I was wrong about the uh, the helicopter. I've just been chatting to those guys back there and it's for uh, lifting concrete up to the top of Applethwaite Wood where they're putting a, uh, a new mast in for uh, emergency services uh, comms. So good job. Helicopter's about finished. It's down there in the valley now. Just doing bits and pieces and then he'll be off. There he goes. It won't be long before he's back at base in Inverness. We don't have the luxury of aerial transport, so we'll just carry on foot up to the top of the Garburn Pass. On the other side of the valley, above the green pastures, is Wansfell. Wansfell Pike is that promontory on the left, whereas Wansfell, or Baystones as it's known, is along the ridge to the right. The clouds scurrying across the valley give you an idea of just how windy it was getting. There's a good view of Red Screes from here, a few miles over to the northwest. Just past that little forest, on the right hand side in the wall you'll see a stile. Now if you want to go to Sallows, you have to cross that stile, and then keep to the wall, and Sallows is up on the left. Not far, a little bit boggy in places, quite easy from here. But we're not going that way today. We're going to continue along the path through this gate, a little bit further up onto the moor that takes us up to Yoke. It's turned out to a nice afternoon and I'll see what I feel like when I get to Yoke, as to how far I go or what I do from there. But uh, it's too nice an afternoon just to call it a day here and there's still plenty of daylight left. I've got head torch and everything with me anyway, all the kit, so it's not a problem. And I'll just carry on.
In a couple of hundred yards you'll come to the summit of Galburn Pass, where at a small cairn you'll turn left, heading towards Yoke. The path here can be a bit boggy, but in a short distance it soon dries out and makes for very pleasant walking. Some years back, this stretch of path that I'm on now was just a boggy mess. The drainage here is poor, just over peat, and the more people came along, the more it got damaged, and it became a scrubchy mess. And without something being done to it, it was going to get worse. So I can't remember when it was, but it might have been seven or eight years ago now there was some footpath repair done and the uh, system was to raise the path a bit and build it up and put some hardcore down onto it and I must say not only has it done a good job you might be able to see it back there but the path is now starting to grow over in places, the grass is coming back onto the hard core, but it's a good solid surface to walk on. God knows what it would have been like if it was just left. Now, I know there's some people out there who say, well, we shouldn't do anything to the footpaths and, you know, leave them as it should be intended or don't fix them this way or don't fix them that way. But we can't just leave them. And there is no guidebook for these guys on how to fix these eroded footpaths on the fells. They do it by experience. They don't always get it right and they admit that and we could all see that but they're getting better at it. But they can't just leave them. But the overriding factor is to take into account that these repairs aren't just for the here and now and for us. They're for future walkers, future generations who would turn around and say, why the hell didn't they do something about those paths before they got so bad? Well, that's what they've done here. If you don't like these paths, then do as the guys that fix the fells ask you to do. Find your route, your own route, some distance away from this path, not to the side of it, that just makes matters worse. It's a lovely path to walk on. I have no problem with it whatsoever. But then I've taken time perhaps to understand and look at the logic of why they do it. That's not today's rant. It's just me stating facts. And again, putting over my opinion. I'm not always right. Maybe I am wrong. But it's just my opinion. probably gather by the kit that the uh, weather has certainly cooled down. The wind's picked up as you can probably tell by the shake on the camera but we're now well on the way to the top of Yoke which is up over there. Behind it the grey bit is Ill Bell with a couple of cairns on it and away in the distance is Thornthwaite Crag. I've stopped here because we're at the top of a bit of a pitch path that comes up from the to say the flatlands of moorland at the bottom through the gate and up to here and then I just want to go and have a look at this little outcrop of rock. Oh 
Well, here we are at that outcrop. As you can see, there's a bit of a tumbled down cairn here, which probably served as a, a shepherd's marker in days gone by. But it's got wonderful views down to Windermere. Not perfect today, as you can tell by the wind, but still a great viewpoint, a little bit off the track. And interestingly enough, I don't know if there's a name for this point now. If you look at some of these little um, hill bagging lists that name every lump and hollow just for the sake of it. Interestingly enough, in the old maps that I have seen, the name Yoke was actually given to this point here and not to the summit. The summit on old maps was nameless, but over time, Yoke is the name that is now adopted to the fell and the summit of this fell. So, to me, it's just a nice viewpoint adjoined to Yoke itself. Well, the views have nearly gone now. We're just about at the cloud base. Wind's quite strong, as you can tell. And this is the first big cairn as you approach the summit of Yoke. But it's not the actual top. That's a little bit further along this path, about 150 yards away by a fence. We'll get to the top. I was just about to sit down to have something to eat and I spotted this. A crisp wrapper hidden amongst the stones. I mean, you've eaten the crisps, the packet weighs nothing and it'd be easy to put it in your pocket and take it with you. And then there's more, banana skins just thrown on the ground. They don't decompose really quickly and they, they there's no getting away from it, it's litter. Now I'm not going to film every bit of rubbish that I pick up, but what's this about? It can't be left, it's plastic, it's going to stay forever. If someone's been up here and had a crap, then take it with you. Put it in a bag and take it with you. Otherwise, go somewhere well away from the summit, behind a peat hag, go and have a crap there, bury it with your foot over some peat or something, but don't do this. This is a distinct lack of respect for the landscape. If you come up here to enjoy the fells, don't do this. Run over. I know Bailey, someone else's crap again. Yeah, so you should shake your head. Wasters, aren't they? So I've managed to get a bit of shelter behind a platform of rock on which the summit can is placed. Just have a bit of a hot drink. Totally different uh, day now, really strong breeze. Can't see, well, I can see 300 meters that way, but certainly can't see Hill Bell or any further. The Kentmere Valley is obscured by cloud, as is the Troutbeck Valley. So once I've had this, I'll probably just turn about and go back down the path and head back. But Yoke is actually quite an interesting summit. Doesn't look much, but apparently the Romans had a, a fortlet on here, a, a, a sort of outpost, and there was a building of about 40 meters square. Now, I don't know how close it was to the actual summit, 
but it is noted that uh, that's what there was here. No sign of it, of course, now, no sign of walls or anything like that, but uh, yeah, rather them than me sitting up here on a day like today, but. Instead of heading straight back, I've decided I'll head along to the north slightly to the two tarns just at the end of the fence. By now you couldn't even see the top of Ilbell because of the low cloud. There are two tarns here and oddly enough Wainwright doesn't indicate them in his original pictorial guides. But one of them, this one, does get noted by Chris Jesty in the revised guide. There's nothing really special about them, I just like coming for a look. And having done so, I'll now head back down towards Garburn Pass. now a really windy afternoon and as I turned round I could see that the top of Yoke was now covered in cloud. We timed our visit just right. As we reached the Garburn Road, I guessed that the camera was away for the day. But I was just lucky there was a lovely patch of light across the Troutbeck Valley. the way it goes. Now we're back off the hill and almost back to the car. Looking back to the Ilbell Ridge you can see that the clouds have now lifted and all of the tops are free and clear to view. But the light's gone. It's not a very good night for late evening light. It's quite dull. You can see the church down there where the car's parked and I wouldn't have achieved anything by staying up there on the top ridge anyway. So, it is what it is, it's there for another day, no big deal, and uh, a nice afternoon out on you.